Now we're going to talk about solving rational equations. So for this one, you have two methods. They're basically the same. And I feel like method number two is more useful, like on the problems that we're going to see on the second page. So I'm going to go ahead and just begin with this one. So on number one, method number one, all right, uh, what we can do is we can use something like we used in geometry, which is called uh, like cross multiplication. So anytime you have a fraction equals a number or another fraction, if you have a single fraction on the left and a single equals another single fraction on the right, excuse me, then you can cross multiply. And when you cross multiply, in this case, that's going to give you 7x. And this is going to give you 4 times x minus 6. Now, before I get too far into this, okay, it says right here to check your solutions. Now, the way to kind of avoid that is that you can kind of tell me what x can I be equal to. So now remember, then I cannot divide by zero. So if I set each denominator equal to zero, that would basically tell me, hey, x cannot be equal to six, and x cannot be equal to zero. So what that means to you is if you get an answer that's either zero or six, then it's not a legitimate solution, right? That would be, that would be an extraneous solution. So after you have done that, you can go ahead and move on and then just solve for x like you normally would anything else, right? All right, so this is x is equal to negative 8. And then now, because this answer is not 6 or 0, then we're good. That is a legitimate answer, so we have checked our solutions, all right? For the other one, let's go ahead and find out what uh, a, in this case, cannot be equal to. So set each denominator equal to 0. And now we know that a cannot be equal to 8, and then a cannot be equal to negative 1 half. So I feel like this is much faster. Instead of having to plug in uh, the solution that you got to see if it works or not, this is a lot quicker to figure out if you're going to have extraneous solutions or not. Right? So again, we're going to cross multiply. Right? So we're going to multiply 7 times a minus 8. And then we're going to multiply 3 times 2a plus 1. And as you can see, well, after that, you can just solve for a, right? Now we're going to subtract 6 from each side. I'll do all the work on this one, but I won't do it again. So enjoy. I'm going to add 56. Let me erase one of these because that's not true. Okay. So a is equal to 59, and this is a le legitimate solution. All right, so let's go to something that might be a little harder. Okay, so this one looks, it's actually a little bit more difficult than the next few. All right, so what happens here is the, the process is the same, okay? We're going to start by um, cross multiply, excuse me, by setting the denominator is equal to 0, and this is just going to tell us what r cannot be equal to, right? So r cannot be equal to 1, and r cannot be equal to 0. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cross-multiply. So r times r is r squared. And then 4 times r minus 1, well, that's just going to be 4r minus 4. Now, to solve this, don't forget, for some of you, that might be the difficult part especially if you're terrible at math like some of you are. So what you do here when you have a square function, the first thing you should always do is set it equal to zero, meaning I'm going to subtract the 4r to the left side. I'm going to add the 4 to the left side also. So this is what I mean by setting it equal to zero. And then now we're going to factor. So I need factors of 4 that add up to negative 4. So here are my two factors. Now I set each factor equal to zero. So r is equal to 2, and that is a legitimate answer since it's not 1 or 0, okay? Um, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, let's do number 4 just because it's slightly different. I'm going to multiply that right there, and then this. So we're going to cross multiply. So when I multiply m plus 3 times n minus 2, remember that I have to FOIL. Oh, before I go on too far into this, 
let's set each factor equal to zero. Well, this one, as you can see, is not legitimate. Three is not going to be equal to zero. So that's not a problem, right? So, but n minus two is equal to zero will give you m cannot be equal to two, right? So my answer cannot be equal to two. All right, so let's move on. So by doing that, we can avoid checking the problem later. So we're going to FOIL, which means I have m times m, which is m squared, m times negative 2, which is negative 2m, plus 3m. That's going to give me a positive, oh, shoot. That's going to give me a positive m, and this is going to be minus 6. It's equal to 24. We're going to set that equal to 0. And then now we're going to factor to solve, right? Now, if for some reason this was not factorable, then your only other choice here would be to uh, do the quadratic formula or complete the square, which most of you don't remember. And honestly, I think at this point, neither do I. So one answer is negative 6. The other answer is 5. Okay, so now uh, those two answers are legitimate. We're good. I'm gonna. I will skip number five, and let's see. I'm trying to think of whether I want to skip number. Yeah, I'm gonna skip number six. Also, it's the same process. Okay. Um. Well, you know what? Let's just do it. Number six. Now, when we cross multiply, two x minus three x minus plus four excuse me let's go ahead and assume you know how to do this part right here okay so now we have minus 12 is equal to six yeah okay so the only reason i even wanted to do this well first of all i know that x cannot be equal to negative four, right? I keep forgetting to do that. So that's just me checking my, my work. Do I have a common factor? I don't. So at that point, my only choice is to do uh, bottoms up if it works. Okay, so we're going to start by multiplying those two things together. So we get x squared plus 5x minus 36. You could guess and check. This one's not too bad also. Now I'm going to find those two factors. Remember, because I said negative 36, that means that I have opposite signs. So I have a 9 and a 4. And then I'm going to divide this by the leading thing, right? The leading coefficient, which was 2. Now I um, will divide or reduce the fraction if possible. And then after I reduce or divide the fraction, then I'm going to do the bottom side part, which means I'm going to bring that 2 up here. All right, so those are my two factors. All right, so on this one in particular, well, the answer is going to be negative 2. And also, if I set 2x minus 9 is equal to 0, then x is equal to 9 over 2. Okay, so those two answers are good or legit. All right, so once we get to number 7, okay, you really have a couple of choices. If you like the whole cross, the problem with cross multiplying here is I have two fractions on the left side of the equal sign and only one on the right. So in order for me to do this, you can do it two different ways, right? You can try to find a common denominator for this side first, or you can just find a common, uh, common denominator and add. So let's do that so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna multiply this by n and then this by three. So this would be 4n minus 21 over 3n. That's equal to 1 over 6. And then you can cross multiply if you like. Okay. So let's do that since I'm already I'm already this far. Uh, hmm. Let's see that's 6. 126, yes, is equal to 3n. Uh, again, I'm solving, so I'm going to subtract the 3n, so that's going to give me a 21n is equal to positive 126. So I added the 126 to the other side. All right, so I'm sorry if I went too fast. Essentially, I'm just solving a linear equation. So whether you see how I did that or not, please work it out. 
Uh, okay, so after that, if I divide both sides by 21, then the answer is 6, okay? Now listen, if you don't like that, all right, what you could do if you wanted to is what am I, well, first, before I move on to number eight, to figure out if this answer, instead of checking the answer, what I can do is set each denominator equal to zero, right? In this case, the only letter that I have is N. So N cannot be equal to zero. My answer is obviously not zero. So that answer checks out. That should be the right answer. All right, so let's move on to number eight. Now, if you don't like to do what I just did here, right, where I find a common denominator for the first two terms, then what you can do is what they call method two on page one, all right? We can use the lowest common denominator. So you have to look at all these three and then find out what is my lowest common denominator. And then in this case, my lowest common denominator is 2k, okay? And then once I figure out that my lowest common denominator is 2k, then I would multiply Sorry, my dog is chewing on a bone. <sighs> anyway, he's bored. All right, let's also talk about what k cannot be equal to, right? k cannot be equal to zero. How do I know that? Because I'm setting each denominator equal to zero. But it happens to be that two cannot be equal to zero anyway, so I don't really pay attention to that one, okay? So now, I'm gonna multiply everything by 2k, all right? So that's gonna give me, um, let's see, 2k times that case cancel. So let me write it out for you so you can see what I'm doing here. I normally don't write this step, but I'm just writing it so you can see where I'm, how, what I'm about to get right after that. So if I multiply this by 2k, case cancel, end up with 6. If I multiply this by 2k, then the 2s cancel, end up with minus k. And if I multiply this by 2k, case cancel, end up with 24. Subtract 6 from each side, that gives me 18. Divide by negative 1, so k is equal to negative 18. And that answer checks out, okay? So you could do it like that also, right? So if you can see where your lowest common denominator is, you can do that. Um, huh, well, let's see. This one's kind of an interesting thing here. This is over one, okay? If I factor, so before I get too far into this, let's set the denominator is equal to zero. So, my answer cannot be equal to two. And for this one right here, I can do it several ways. I can factor this because I know this is the difference of squares. So P cannot be equal to negative two and P cannot be equal to positive two, which we already had, All right? So again, uh, the thing to note is that P cannot be equal to two or negative two. Those are not answers. I'm just telling you that's what P cannot be equal to. Now, I'm going to do this like I did example number eight, the previous one. So I'm going to find my, my uh, lowest common denominator. Now, one is not a problem. Like this is not a problem, right? The, the one of the denominator, denominator, excuse me, is not a problem. Now, what I do know is if, if I were trying to find a common denominator for all of these, then all I would have to do is multiply... Well, let me, let me rewrite this real fast just to make sure we don't get lost. I'm going to go ahead and factor this bottom part so you can see where I'm getting this from. All right. So the lowest common denominator would be if I were trying to find a common denominator for all of these, right? What would I have to multiply this by? Well, on this side, the lowest common denominator, notice that this has a P minus two, this one has a P minus two, right? So what that means is that my lowest common denominator would be my lowest common denominator would be P plus two 
P minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply each one of those terms times that. Now, if I multiply the first term times P plus 2, P minus 2, then I end up with P plus 2 only. On this side, I would end up with both, P plus 2, P minus 2. And if I multiply P plus 2, P minus 2 times 8 over P plus 2, P minus 2, then I just end up with 8. All right, so let's just distribute. Let's multiply and then distribute afterwards. I would have to FOIL that. It just happens to the middle term cancels. So subtract a from each side. So that's equal to zero now. So now remember, I don't have a common factor here. So I'm going to have to multiply those two together. So that's going to give me p squared plus 2p minus 48 is equal to zero. Now I need to find two factors. Since, negative, since that's a negative with the 48, the last term is negative, that means that one of these is positive and one negative, right? So I need factors that multiply to be negative 48 that subtract to be 2, 8 and 6. And then now I'm going to divide each one of these by 3. Now go ahead and divide or reduce the fraction. And if you can't, well, bottom set. Bottom set is not a drinking game, okay, kids? All right. So that's what I have there, okay? Those are my two answers. Now, if I set each factor equal to zero, then P is equal to negative eight over three. That's good. And the other answer would be P or set each factor equal to zero, right? So P is equal to two. But notice that I said from the very beginning that P could not be equal to 2 or negative 2. So this answer, the one that I just got, is actually not valid. So my only answer is negative 8 over 3. Uh, okay, so again, to find, I'm going to do maybe, let's see how many do I want to do here. Let me do a couple more. hate to do it, but since some of you are not able to actually meet with me, let's just do it like this. All right, so first I'm going to factor this three out so I can more easily tell what's going on, right? So if I were trying to find our lowest common uh, denominator, I would have to multiply this by three, right? And on this side, hmm. Let's see. Well, let me do it like that this time. Let me do it like that. Could be a terrible mess. I don't know. So I'm just going to find a common denominator for these two first. Okay, so that means I'm just going to multiply the left side times 3. So again, I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3 like that. And this is 3w minus 1 is equal to w over 9. So this is 10 over 3w minus 3. So you could do it like this also. I have no preference. I, I think I tend to actually, I, I just lied. I think normally I prefer to find the common denominator and bring bring it where I have one fraction on the left side, one fraction on the right side of the equal sign. All right, but again, it doesn't matter. So now we're going to cross multiply like we did in the first few examples. All right, so we're cross multiplying here. All right, that's going to give me 3w squared minus 3w is equal to 90. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 90 from each side. 
Now, do I have a common factor? I do. I have a three, which is good because otherwise that would have been a pretty terrible problem. Now, this three on the outside really doesn't matter because if I divide it out, three divided by zero is still, well, zero. So I just have to factor this and solve. All right. So the answer is W is equal to six and W is equal to negative five. But to check the answer, I need to figure out if any of these, when I set them equal to zero, it's gonna be equal to zero, right? The denominators cannot be equal to zero. So if I solve for this one, Y cannot be equal to one, excuse me, Y, I meant W and W minus one. Well, that's going to be the same thing. So it cannot be equal to one. So these are on the safe side. We have the answers for that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do this one. This one, for example, it could happen where you have no solution, and that's the case on this one. Now, the reason that that's the case on this one is when I set the denominator equal to zero, my dog just took a napkin. He's going to go destroy it. Um, I would have x cannot be equal to negative three, right? And when you do the work, okay, when you actually do the work, um, which makes me want to do it, but that's not for the sake of time. Then X, you actually get the answer is that. Well, it's no solution because the answer that you got, the answer that you got was the one that I told you that you can't have, All right? So because of that, you have no solution. All right. Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, we'll just see how you do with this. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, all right?